kasihmu setia selamanya pengorbananmu membebaskanku segenap hatiku memujimu segala yang ku ada ku serahkan Tiada sepertimu, kaulah kekuatan hidupku, memberikanku harapan. Yesus ku percaya dan ku mencinta.
All of my hopes, my dreams, my days, I lay it all down again. Devoted to do your will. Give. 
Sepanjang hidupku tinggi. 
Hello everybody, welcome to our X online worship service and whatever the circumstances, we're going to give God our best, amen? amen. So wherever you are, come on, let's give the Lord a big shout of praise, Woo! hallelujah! Hallelujah! Woo! Praise yeah. God. Let's praise God. Him, let's go! Here we go! Great and mighty King of glory came to earth to say the Lord's I'm yours. I'm a believer. Your love and word stands forever. It's no one else. You're all that matters, Lord. I'm a believer.
家早上好。It's a good day to praise the Lord. 今天是一个最棒的一天，来赞美我们的神。Amen. I want to declare God's word to you this morning. 今天早上呢，我要来宣告神的话语。Taken from Philippians chapter four, verses four to seven. Is in Philippians four, the fourth chapter, the fourth to the seventh verse. God's word says, "Rejoice in the Lord always." God's word says, "You must always rejoice." Again, I say, "Rejoice." 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 Again, I Verse six says, "Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God." 第六节说，应当一无挂虑，只要凡事接着祷告、祈求和感谢，将你们所要的告诉神。Verse seven says, "And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding." Will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. 第七节说，神所赐出人意外的平安，必在基督耶稣里保守你们的心怀意念。Amen. Amen. Church, as we enter into a time of prayer, 我们今天来到祈祷的时刻。We want to start with rejoicing. We want to rejoice in the Lord. 我们要先从喜乐开始。我们要在主里面常常喜乐。God is with us, Amen. 神与我们同在，阿门。Doesn't matter where you are, tuning in from home, God is with us. 今天不管你在哪里，我告诉你，神与你同在。Amen. So, Father Lord, we want to declare Your name above all names, O God. 天父，我们宣告你的名字超乎所有的名字。We declare that you are sovereign and that you are above every circumstances, O God. 我们宣告神，你是掌权的，神你也高超越所有不同的状况和境况。Lord, we know that you are in control. 神，我们也知道，神你是掌权的。And therefore, we have the peace of God to guard our hearts and our minds through this time. So, we are in this time of peace. God, you have the peace of God to guard our hearts and our minds through this time. So, we are in this time of peace. Children of God, your Father listens to you. 我告诉你，神的子民啊，你的天父聆听你的祈祷。Father Lord, we want to lift up all our prayers before you this morning. 天父，今早我们把所有的需要带到你面前来祷告。Lord, you alone know our needs and and the circumstances that we are in right now. 神，你真的知道我们个人的需要，你也知道我们现在所面临的境况。Some of us may be worried about our jobs or our families or health. 当中有人可能今天早上，我们在忧虑着我们的家庭、我们的健康、我们的工作。But I want to declare that God knows and He will break through for you. 我告诉你们，宣告神，他知道，神他将会把他的突破赐给你们。This is a battle that God is fighting for us. Amen. 这是神为我们征战的一场战。So I want to declare that we shall sing, and God will help us break through. So we want to declare, we want to sing, we want to praise the Lord. God will help us break through. We ask for the peace of God to surround all our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. God's peace will surround us with the faith in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all God's people say, "In Jesus' name, we pray." Amen. 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 For an amazing time of worship, thank you, Extreme. 刚才呢，感谢我们的敬拜团带领我们经历一个非常棒的敬拜赞美时间。It's a good day to praise the Lord. I'm smiling, but you can't see it. 我们都在笑，可是你肯定看不到。我们用眼睛来笑就好了。Amen. My name is Rose, and this is Elder Shirley. 我的名字叫 Shirley， 然后旁边这一位叫 Rose。We are privileged to be your chairperson for this morning. 今天早上呢，能够为大家主持今天的敬拜赞美聚会呢，是我们的荣幸。We want to say good morning and hello to everyone watching from home. 我们再说一次，我们再说一次早安咯！感谢你今天早上能够来参与我们。Whether you're watching through Facebook or YouTube, hello and welcome. 今天可能你在 YouTube 或者是在 Facebook 参与我们的话呢 ，hello hello hello， 欢迎。If this is your first time to ask a worship service, please. Uh, be welcome and please say hi to all of us on the chat. 如果今天是您第一次来参与我们的敬拜聚会的话呢，那请您一定要留言让我们知道，好让我们能够热烈的欢迎你哦。
We also want to say hi to all our local plants uh, tuning in today. Oh, 对，还有我们每个教会的呃职会呢，每一个伙伴来参与我们的 Hello， 您好。And a big shout out to our partners who are tuning in from X Melbourne and X Karawachi.、Yeah. 对 ，X Melbourne, X Karawachi， 欢迎欢迎欢迎。All right, so fix your eyes on the screen as XTV bring you the latest news in X Church. 现在呢，让我们一起来观看我们来临星期的资讯。Good morning, church. As we are having online worship service this morning and the next, we would like to do a fun little activity with all of you. To start it off, take a selfie or wifi of yourself joining X Online Worship this morning. Ready? And snap! Now, find a selfie or wifi you took during the CMCO back in May to June. Once you're done. Post the CMCO photos, both the present one and the past, up on Facebook or Instagram, and tag us at X Church and X Online Worship. That's all for this quick activity. Have a good worship service, Church. The news for us every week. 谢谢我们的 XTV 团队，每个星期都衷心的把最新的资讯带给我们。Now it's time to celebrate birthdays in the house. 对，接下来我们要欢庆生日了。If you are celebrating your birthday、uh, this week, any time from today until the coming Saturday, we want to celebrate you. 对，如果今天是您的生日，或者是来临星期一直到星期六呢是您生日的话，我们要跟你一起来欢庆。And if it's you celebrating your birthday, say happy birthday. To me. If it's your birthday, then you can say Happy Birthday. Come on, hurry, Jody. Yay! All right. Happy Birthday to you. Hey, Happy Birthday! 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 Happy Birth
May the Lord bless you in this year. Amen. 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 It's always good to celebrate in the Lord. We want to continue celebrating wedding anniversaries. Uh, so first up, we want to congratulate George and Amanda Cha on their wedding anniversary Ooh. on the 19th of October. Yay. Yay. All right. And then there are two couples celebrating on the 20th of October, Kenny and Leanne. And Yay. also Wilson and Cheryl Go. Yay! Amazing Hanba. couple. We also want to celebrate Daniel and Judy on the 22nd Woo. of October. So if you know them. Uh, and last but not least, Pastor Joel, VJ, and Delia all the way Woo. from X Melbourne. Ju. Celebrating their amen. anniversary on the 24th. Amen, amen. Ju, Yishan Fufu na Jie Hun Zhen Nishin Kwa Le Shen Dada Zhu Fu Ni Men de Hun Ying. Ran Men Sing Fu Ni Man Yong Yu Ai He. Amen. May the Lord bless your marriage and may you continue to grow ever more in love with each other. Amen. Amen. Church, you know what time it is now? It's time for our tithes and our offering. Amen. And we, and we really look forward to this time because it's an expression of our giving unto the Lord. Now you can do your tithes and offerings through an online transfer. And you can see the details are on your screen right now. And once you have banking, you can email the confirmation slip to finance at xchurch.org. Let's prepare our hearts to give as I lead you in reading of scripture. Amen. I want to read to you from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10. It's honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with good wine. Come, let us pray. Father Lord, we want to come before you with a heart of thankfulness. You are good and always good, Lord. Thank you for giving us life and life abundantly. And Lord, even as we give unto you this morning, Lord, we pray that our giving will be a blessing to you. You will bring a smile to your face, O Lord. We pray that every giver, Lord, will be so blessed, Lord. And the giving will be used to multiply and expand your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. 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 So aku kak uh, berterima kasih ya ngau Tuhan Kristus. Sebab saya ngau Tuhan. Sebab ya udah mai aku jauh mai kita. Jadi orang yang layan nemu dek. Hai, nama aku Juliana. Aku dari PJ2 Homes. Sebab aku agak miat uh, sebenarnya aku jadi Kristian. Apa yang dah aku selalu belayak maya aku 10 tahun. Nanti sedak selalu belayak ngagai uh, lalu besarak sedak maya aku masanya. Aku agak miat. So maya sedak besarak aku mayo mai pemedias dalam hati. Mayo hutai yang aku nak oleh lupa kena agak miat. Sebab ia pedih mai and ngau uh, sedak nadai berjakuk ke lepas Aku lepas tidak bersarak. Maya aku lagi sekolah secondary. Maya ni aku far from dua, empat belas tahun lah. Sejak kapan aku ah, selalu ngasuh aku ngagai tidak join penge uh, group tidak YCS Young Christian Students Club. Aku segi nak nemu nama utainya. Nama hal tidak gak ngasuh aku join ngau tidak kia. Ya mada out oh, tidak tu uh, kumpulan orang Kristian gerempu tidak. Aku ngai gak sebab Nama hal orang Kristian tu selalu gembira, nadai pemade hati kasih dato. Asyik asyik 
berlagu asyik-asyik main dalam hati aku lah nyak asai aku tapi uh, bisik satu tengah hari tu kaban mana aku mada am ngau aku kia kia ngagai christian club aku mada nama hal deh mada datai aja mada okey datai aku kia kia aku bisik sitik um, suara dalam hati aku mada uh, am ngagai aja kia aku pernah namu nama hal aku kak ngagai kia aku ngagai join aku ngau sidak bergerumpu klubnya Asai datai aku be, be, berkelasnya, aku pun nak nemu nama hal mayu orang madah nama berita aku nama mana kedai aku aku pun nama hal si tak tu mana mai nama orang Kristen tu mana mai you know and then engkau uh, maya si tak berlagu puji sembah lagu above all yang yang ngaga aku nyaba aku nyaba serak serak maya ba aku nak nemu nama hal Asai ku Tuhan baka dinga nyaba aku. Uh, maya nya lah bisi orang nanya, siapa ka nerima uh, Tuhan Yesus Kristus sebagai juru semala, juru penyelamat ya. Maya nya lah aku angkat tangan aku, uh, na nemu nama utai, nama nemu nak maksud ya. Angkat cak tangan. Maya nya aku 4 baru 14 tahun, tapi aku sigi uh, mayu keyakinan yang to Tuhan bisi jaku nga aku maya nya. Tik Maya malamnya aku pulai, uh, sida satu keluarga aku, satu sida satu rumah madang aku mana mana ni dari Kristen, tapi apa yang aku jangan nak setuju, sebab ya madah ya ya selalu pikir yang orang Kristen tu nadai, nadai utai bukai dalam hidup sida, tapi lama lama antik udah besar, ya madah nama anak aku tu lain Maya, apa yang aku pun madah, hmm, dek lain Maya dek ni tu aku madah au, sebab aku dah berubah apa? Sebab apa dek aku sayau nganuan nanti dek kak meda aku berubah nanti dek kak meda diri aku kenyak uh, maybe mungkin dek kak terima Tuhan Kristus ya tapi apa aku meda enggak uh, tapi sejak harinya uh, kita aku berjakok ngah apa aku ya meda ngaku uh, nang awak nanti nuan jadi Kristen dek jadi mana mana aja aw oh, anang mangah anang selalu anu orang Sikit kenyak lah cinta ya. So aku kak uh, berterima kasih ya ngau Tuhan Kristus. Rasa ngau Tuhan sebab ya udah mai aku jauh lah mai kita. Jadi orang yang layan nemu dek um, uh, hatiku berubah. Nada lagi asai even walaupun rasa itu sah, tapi aku dapat medak kelainan dalam hidup aku sebab aku nemu ya sayau ngau aku Tuhan sayau ngau.今天早上呢我们接下来就要聆听今天的信息可是由于这个情况有点突发和特殊啊那我们今天的信息呢就只是以英语来进行可是不要紧要让我们继续把圣经拿出来把笔记本拿出来预备这个新房来聆听我们的
for those of you watching from overseas who may not know or are familiar with that term, CMCO. We already had CMCO a couple of months ago and then we went into our RMCO which was Recovery Movement Control Order uh, and then of course with the spike, the recent spike uh, here in Malaysia, in Sabah, in Kedah and now in Selangor, uh, we are forced uh, to go back uh, into recording uh, from home. Uh, but you know, with God, all things are possible. We are never down as Christians. We are always up because Jesus Christ is the one who lifts us. And one thing I know about uh, the uh, pandemic is that uh, there are things for the church to learn. There are things for the church to arise and to come alive. And so maybe God is not done with His teaching or training of us or testing. You know, the fire that comes into our lives will test our faith. God wants our faith to shine forth as gold refined by fire. And so uh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, even though we have to go through this again for two weeks or maybe even a month, uh, who knows, uh, except God, who knows how long this will take, but we are fine. We're going to get through this and we're going to get through it with flying colors. Because again, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Praise the Lord. So here we are today and I'm wanting to uh, continue with the second part. First time you heard me preaching from Galatians just a month ago was on uh, this whole thought about the gospel from the angle that Christ is enough for us. And I want to continue uh, from that thought uh, from Galatians uh, and I want to read to you uh, again from Galatians chapter 1 and chapter 2. We're going to read the Word of God. But before that, let me just review and rehearse uh, that which I gave to you the last time. Uh, we talked about the gospel. We talked about the gospel being God's only Son provides eternal life. And many of you have heard that that is one of the uh, uh, definitions of gospel. God's only Son provides eternal life. And I talked about eternal life being, as it says in John 17 verse 3, uh, knowing God and the one whom He sent, Jesus Christ. Uh, I told you uh, last time we met uh, that uh, Jesus Christ truly is enough. But this is a truth that we have to, number one, perceive. Uh, we've been talking about preaching the gospel, but the Lord showed me that before we can preach the gospel, we need to perceive it. And perceive has got to do with internal reflection, uh, uh, internal uh, uh, resonance. Uh, we've got to really know this from the inside out, that Christ is enough. Uh, a lot of the times, you know, when we end a word with the, with, with the, with the word sieve, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, we talk about conceive and uh, we talk about even deceive and uh, all of these things that happens on the uh, external uh, actually becomes powerful when it becomes internalized. And we can only preach powerfully what we have received internally. Uh, Jesus uh, and God Almighty, our Father in heaven, wants us to uh, receive as we perceive. Uh, and then, of course, uh, what we perceive, we will also preach. And if we really perceive that Jesus Christ is the only way, truth and life, that He is enough for us, then we will preach that. But not only will we preach that, we will have to continuously in our lives prove that. And so I gave you the three Ps the last time we met. Perceive it, preach it, and prove it. Paul also went on to say what he perceived and received is not from man, but it's, it's by revelation. It's by revelation from God. He spoke about a different gospel, how, how the Galatians were following after a different gospel, and uh, what a different gospel actually means, uh, what the message of a different gospel is, is that Jesus is not enough. Jesus is not enough. The gospel that is from God is, is, is that Jesus is enough. Christ is enough. But a different gospel simply means Christ is not enough. Uh, and that's what the Galatians were in danger of living by, that it had to be Christ plus one, Christ minus one, then only it's enough. You know, maybe it's Christ plus a psychiatrist, then only it's enough. Christ plus a counsellor, then only it's enough. Christ plus medication, then, then only it's enough. Christ plus or Christ minus. And that's not the gospel that Paul was preaching. And that's not the gospel that we should be preaching. Christ, at the end of the day, ultimately, it will always be more than enough 
for us. But there was a different gospel that was being preached, a different gospel that was being practiced. And um, when someone says a different gospel, when Paul speaks about a different gospel, he's actually saying you can still use it even though it's not the same. Let me tell you a story uh, very quickly about um, my filter, my water filter and the tap here in my house. Uh, you know, a couple of months ago, uh, we found that uh, the tap was having some problem just turning uh, and it was, it was getting really tight. So I decided to have it looked at, have it changed uh, if necessary. Uh, and so uh, it, it just took too long. We couldn't find the tap uh, that uh, was specially made I found out for this particular filter, water filter that we had here in our house. Uh, and so one day I decided maybe I'll get a contractor you know, who came to fix different things in my house. Maybe he could take a look at it. And so he did. He, he removed the tap, which, which wasn't easy to move or remove in the first place. But he took that tap and uh, he began to open it up and look at it. And uh, both of us were looking at it uh, because we found out that this tap was very, very special. And so anyway, he went out, uh, he, he had to get a different tool to, to get it fixed, to get it to get into the inner parts of the tap. And so he finally found that tool, he went out and he began to, you know, fiddle with it. And then he came back and, you know, we started to uh, reattach it back uh, and water came out of uh, that tap. And I was feeling, you know, happy because not only was water flowing out of that tap, uh, but more importantly, that tap was no longer so tight to turn. And so, you know, it was all thumbs up. It was all good. The contractor left. Uh, and then uh, my wife came back and actually had a look at it. She was happy, of course, that the water was flowing, that the tap was not so tight, but she was uh, alarmed at one thing. Well, she knew about this filter more than I did. Um, and she said, Kenneth, uh, there needs to be a particular uh, symbol or a signal that turns on when the filter is filtering. And if the filter is not filtering, uh, you know, we won't get the ultimate result. And what is the ultimate result of a water filter? That the water is filtered, that the water is pure. And so what happened was, uh, I said, oh, Sandra, I didn't know that. If I knew that, then, you know, uh, uh, I wouldn't be so happy that just because it was working uh, externally, that it was also working internally. So what happened was, uh, you know, the next day came, I went to church, I preached. Uh, and, uh, you know, all throughout the hours uh, that was passing, uh, I felt like, you know, I've I got to get down to, it, uh, uh, to this. After I finished preaching, I, I was driving back home and the Lord, I, I felt, was just speaking to me, Kenneth, uh, you need to get back into this tap and I will show you uh, what needs to be done. And so what happened was, uh, I, you know, painstakingly, but, you know, excitedly as well, because I, I felt like God gave me an answer and I went in and, and, I, and I fiddled with it. And so I fixed it and, uh, you know, everything was good. The water flowed out. Uh, the tap was no longer so tight. Uh, that's, that's all good. Uh, but more importantly, I had to look at that filter to see whether that symbol came on. And finally, that symbol came on. And so uh, this, this just shows you the ultimate result of the gospel is the freedom and the liberty that Christ has given to us. You know, that's the ultimate. And when Christians don't live in that freedom, then something is wrong somewhere with the gospel that they're living. Something is wrong somewhere with the gospel that they're believing because the gospel that Jesus gave us leads to liberty. So the ultimate thing of that filter, that water filter, is purified filtered water. And so uh, initially, while the, the water was flowing out of the tap and, 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 and it was no longer tight, I was satisfied because here you go, you know, it's working already. Can you la, as we say here in Malaysia, can la, even though it's different, even though, you know, uh, it, uh, it, it doesn't uh, work the same way as it should be working. At least water is flowing out. At least uh, it's not so tight anymore. But you can't settle for that because what is the ultimate result? Purified water, filtered water. What is the ultimate result of a Christian life that has been blessed with the gospel of Jesus Christ that has been filled with the truth that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life hey come on, it is liberty it is freedom uh, don't just settle, 
a lot of people are settling for second best. A lot of people are, are, are going like, you know, can still use, can still use, even though not the same, you know, they buy a different kind of brand and although you're not supposed to buy that kind of a brand, you're not supposed to put that kind of a battery into that camera because it might fry that camera, but you go like, oh, can still use lah. You buy something cheaper and then we put it in and then it just totally burns up that, that, that beautiful computer that you have or uh, that beautiful camera that you have or that beautiful handphone because you, 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 you're you settling. You're settling for second best. And, and, and you know, uh, don't do that because at the end of the day, it's not the same. So that's why Paul said it's a different gospel, a different gospel. Uh, so liberty really at the end of the day is what we want to be talking about. So let's read the Word of God uh, here in Galatians. Here we go. Um, this is what Paul said in verse 6 of Galatians 1. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from Him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Perversion of the gospel is also a distortion of the gospel. It's also a twisting of the, of the gospel. So the gospel still looks like the gospel, but it's a little bit twisted here, it's a little bit distorted there, and we are satisfied. We are, we are accepting it as the true gospel. We are going like, oh, it's okay, la, you know. It's just a battery, it's just a water filter, it's just, you know, a tap. No, 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 we, we must not settle again because why? Ultimately, we want it to work. Uh, and, and Paul continues to say, but even we, if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be a curse. Wow, that's a very strong word from Paul. He's so, so serious about this. Don't preach another gospel. Don't preach a different gospel. Don't say Jesus plus one, minus one. Say Jesus is enough. He's more than enough. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. Very important. Paul wanted to say that this is not a man's gospel. This is not what, something I got from man. Uh, but he continues to say, For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, this is the gospel that came from revelation. And I want to speak to all of you who are watching now that, uh, you know, really the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, Jesus being more than enough, or at least, at least, the very least, Jesus is enough, must come to you, even you now watching this, must come to you as a revelation. It, it, it must come to you as something that you perceive in your own heart that this is true. It cannot be forced on you. It cannot be pushed on you. You cannot just be, you know, saying, oh, just because my pastor said so, just because the leader said so. No, you must experience it for yourself. You must receive it as you perceive it and you must perceive it by revelation. So that's how Paul was so convinced because he was not just taught it. He was not just given it from man, but he received it from the Lord as a revelation. For you have heard, he said, of my former conduct in Judaism. So he spoke about Judaism. He spoke about how he learned other ways uh, to, to get to God, uh, other teachings uh, from other religions. Until, uh, in verse 15, uh, when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through His grace to reveal His Son in me. See, you get a, a second word, revelation now. T uh, uh, God revealed his son, Jesus Christ, in me. It's got to happen in you, in me. That revelation has to happen in me. It's not just the teachings I get, you know, or all the good teachers have taught me. No, it's not all this that has happened in the past, but, but what has the Lord Jesus Christ revealed to you personally? Personally. I did not immediately confer with man, he said. Nor did I even go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. I, I just want to let you know, it's not a man's thing. It's a God thing. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem. So he said, I took some time. I took some time. I, I, I didn't immediately go and confer and, 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 and get man's approval. No, I took some time. You know, I took some time. What is Paul saying? I just want to tell you all that there is no different gospel. There's only one gospel and, and that gospel comes from God as a revelation. Okay, And then uh, chapter 2, it says, Then after 14 years, uh, I went up again to Jerusalem. Wow, he's saying that, you know, I took all, all that time, you know, uh, uh, because I just took what God gave me and I ran with it, man. And then I preached among the Gentiles, he said, but privately to those who were of 
reputation, you know. And then he goes on to say, yet not even Titus who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. I love that he's, he's, he, he's continually saying to the Galatians that uh, no one around me was using the law. No one around me was saying Jesus is not enough. You see? So almost everything that he's writing here in Galatians is, is saying to us uh, that um, Jesus is enough. And this occurred because of the false brethren secretly brought in who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty. See, in verse 4, chapter 2, Paul speaks about what? Liberty. There are, there are these people who are spying out, you know, coming in to our lives by stealth mode, you know, uh, subtle, uh, deceiving like the, the serpent did to Eve. Uh, and, and, and what they want to do, they, they, they want to spy out our liberty. They go, they, they, they're probably thinking in their minds, why is uh, Elvin so liberated? Why, why is Kenneth so liberated? Why is Sandra living like there was not a care in the world? Why are these Christians having such a freedom? They're smiling even in the midst of CMCO and lockdowns. They, they have hope even when there's exams. Uh, they, they have faith even when there's a test. You know, what, 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 is, what is the cause of their liberty? You see, they, they, some of them not only are asking the question, they're jealous, you know, they're, 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 they're envious that we are so liberated because Christ has set us free, you see. And so they, they can't understand it. They don't want to understand it sometimes. Uh, so they come in and they spy and they want to twist and they want to turn and, and they want to do all kinds of things to say, no, it cannot be. Jesus can't be enough. Jesus can't be enough. It's got to be Jesus plus one, Jesus minus one. But I'm telling you, Paul is telling you, uh, you know, that uh, this is not the case uh, uh, with uh, the people I've met in Jerusalem. They, not, they, 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 they did not force me to do anything else. Uh, and then, uh, of course, towards the end, uh, they desired only, in verse 10, that we should remember the poor, the very thing which I also was eager to do. Now, you know, Paul was very bold when he continued writing. He said, now when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face. Wow, even Peter, uh, the apostle, Paul was so bold to withstand Peter uh, to his face. Why? Why? What happened? For before certain men came from James, uh, Peter would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself. Why? Fearing those who were of the circumcision. So the Jews came. Before the Jews came, Peter was you know, having fellowship with the Gentiles, eating with them. And then when the Jews came, uh, Peter withdrew himself, separated himself. You know? So uh, uh, on one hand, he was uh, okay uh, with the Gentiles. On another hand, he wasn't. Why? Why? Uh, and, and so uh, Paul said, uh, you know, and the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, if you being a Jew live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the, as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. So what Peter was doing, and, and probably he was not, you know, he's not, he was not realizing it until, of course, a brother like Paul, you know, had to confront him, had to sort of rebuke him. Uh, and, uh, you know, Peter, again, what was he doing? What was the summary of his hypocrisy? The summary, summary of his hypocrisy, or it, maybe he didn't realize it, but the summary of Peter's hypocrisy was this, that Jesus and the teachings of Jesus was not enough. I still had to please the Jews. I still had to have a, at least an external image that I was following the law, you see. So Paul is saying, you see, even Peter, you know, one of the best, if not the leader of all the apostles, can also fall into this. What more us, right? What more us? Uh, that Jesus is not good enough at times. There are times in our lives that Jesus uh, may not, you know, be all sufficient, you see. So that is what we, we need to be watchful for, especially those of us who have had other religions before other teachings before, other, you know, uh, uh, the doctrines before, other understandings, you know, we come into this liberty that Christ has given us and then we get back into that place where Jesus is not enough. And uh, so I want to tell you, uh, people, even lovingly warn you uh, not to get into that place uh, uh, because uh, the truth of the gospel, again, come on, everybody, you should know it by now, Christ is enough. We've got to be consistent, people. Come on, listen to me now. Every one of us got to be consistent with our message. 
consistent with our lifestyle consistent amen day in day out be consistent if he is enough if he's more than enough then make sure he's enough at any time every time anywhere everywhere hallelujah praise god amen amen i i want to uh just for the sake of uh, uh showing you how much uh paul was so caught up with the gospel uh, i want to give you very quickly six uh uh, uh, uh points or six angles uh, of uh, how complete the gospel is as far as Paul uh, was concerned. So uh, Galatians uh, chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Let's very quickly look at Galatians 1, uh, 8 and 9. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you that we have preached to you, let him be a curse. So uh, I want to start with the first one. The first one says, Gospel 2. Uh, gospel to I preach the gospel to you and if there's anyone else who will preach to you a different gospel uh, he will be a curse now let's talk about gospel by uh, here we go uh, Galatians 1 11 uh, but I make known to you brethren that the gospel which was preached by me uh, there's a person who preaches the gospel and so not just preach to who but preach by who uh, and, and, and that's you know something we have to watch out for right uh, uh, the gospel is being preached to so every day what is the message that's coming out from our lives to who to your children around you to your colleagues around you to who is the gospel being preached watch out for that by who is the second one by who is the gospel being preached wow wow even the person that's preaching the gospel and his life and his belief system and all that even his, you know peter and his actions not just his words but his actions is your action showing that the gospel or that jesus is enough what's the next one gospel through not just gospel to not just gospel by, but gospel through. Let's look at Galatians 1 verse 12. For I neither received it from men, nor was, was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. So it's not just gospel to, it's not just, gos just, just gospel by, but it's gospel through. Through whom did you get it? Through whom? And Paul said, I didn't get it from man. I didn't just get it from any teaching. I got it through revelation. Hallelujah. Revelation. You and I must get a revelation, a personal, deep, internal experience uh, of, of, of the truth of the gospel. And that is that Jesus is enough. Next one is gospel which, wow, gospel which, Galatians 2.2, 2. Galatians 2.2 2 says, And I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. is a gospel which I preach to the Gentiles. The gospel which, that very one gospel, is not any other gospel. The gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Praise God by revelation. So, uh, uh, you know, I just want you to see all the angles that Paul is covering, you know. That there is no angle that the gospel doesn't cover. And next one, the gospel might. Galatians 2.5. Galatians 2.5 says this. To whom we did not yield submission. Okay, we're talking about the, uh, the, the false brethren who secretly uh, came in by stealth to spy out our liberty. Paul said, to whom we did not yield submission even for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. The truth of the gospel might, oh, let it continue with you, you know, hallelujah, let nothing stop it. Let not, none, none of our actions hinder the gospel, that the gospel might continue to go on and to go on and to go on. You know, Paul, as he was writing this, was just so full of the true gospel so full of the thought of wanting people to go like, come on, it came from, from God, it goes through me, it goes to you, and I pray that you go to many more people that it might continue to keep on going, not a different gospel, but the gospel that Jesus Christ is enough for all times, anytime, anywhere, everywhere. Gospel 4 is the final point. Galatians 2.7 says, But on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me, as the gospel for the circumcised was to Peter, they gave me the right hand of fellowship. Hallelujah, praise God. There is a gospel for everyone. A gospel for everyone. The Gentiles, the Jews, you know, 
the white, yellow, black, red, whatever color skin you are, the gospel is for you. And what is the gospel again, everybody? Is Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. And I pray that all that truth will lead to this one goal, and the goal that uh, liberty is what Jesus paid the price for. He paid the price for us. And that's why Romans 1.16, you know, and this is also Paul saying, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? Why are we not ashamed? See, the gospel actually is so simple, people should be ashamed. Because when you look at other books, other doctrines, other understandings of religion that's going around, sometimes it does look like Christianity is too simple. And that's why there's another scripture that says God uses the simple to put to shame the wise. He uses the weak to put to shame the strong. God is glorified, you know, because we can't get to Him through our own strength and works and action and wisdom. No. Uh, the Bible says our own righteousness is as filthy rags. It is only the righteousness of Christ that comes through faith, believing in Him. It's too simple, right? Even a child can do this. We don't even have to go to Bible school for this. We don't have to go through, you know, hours and hours of learning. Does a person on the deathbed have hours and hours of learning before he says, Jesus, I believe in you, and then in a blink of an eye, he's gone, he's dead, but he's alive now in Christ. Christ made it that simple. Christ made it simple for a child. And Christ made it simple for a cancer patient in the hospital. Christ made it simple even for a person in coma who can't even answer you, but maybe could just maybe blink an eye to say, I receive Jesus. Christ made it simple. Jesus is enough. So there is power. There's power in simplicity. And yet, you know, a lot of people can be ashamed of this. A shame of, it's just too simple. I, I can't believe it because it's too simple. Can it be? Can it be so simple that all I need to do is believe, to have faith in what God has given to me? He has given me His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Can this be true? So Paul says, I am not ashamed of this simple, 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 simple childlike gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. And what is the ultimate when someone is saved? Well, we become free. We become children. As Galatians 4, if you read on, Galatians 4 and 5 speaks about the two covenants, the Son of the born woman and the son of the free woman. Remember that? When you read Galatians 4, you read it. That the law speaks about being bound, being in bondage, being in prison as an offspring of the born woman, of the slave woman. But God didn't want that for us. He says you are to wait for that child of promise, Isaac, who will be the child of the free woman, of the woman who is not a slave, but a daughter of the Most High God. And we choose by faith to be born again, born into that promise of being a son and a daughter of the free woman. So it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. That is truly the power of salvation. You know, when you get saved, right? If really you watch some movies, people in prison, right? And... Um, and, and maybe there's a fire coming, you know, and all of you will be burned if not for someone coming, you know, to unlock the gates. And what happens is that that person who unlocks the gates and causes us to run out and, and, and to run for our lives, what happens is that we begin to come into a place of freedom and liberty from a place of bondage and slavery and death. So I want you to know that truly Christ is enough. He has come to give us all salvation, those of us who will believe. Praise the Lord. Father, I just want to pray and thank you that uh, though every day in our lives there are people and there are 
teachings and their doctrines and even pressure sometimes from different places and from work, sometimes even pressure on our health, pressure on our wealth, uh, all kinds of things that come to try to attack this simple truth of the gospel, attack the, 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 the truth that says Jesus is enough, more than enough. And then we come into a place of a different gospel, the temptation of believing in a different message that says, yes, Jesus, fine, but Jesus plus, Jesus minus, and then it will be complete. And yet, we know the gospel tells us that we are already complete in Christ. Lord, I pray that all the listeners who are listening to this message will receive, even as they perceive by revelation, that God, you will work that revelation in us. The revelation of your Son will be so real in us that we will begin to live out the fullness that is in that truth, that Christ is enough. And I pray that we, we, people will begin to, to experience your healing, experience your salvation, experience your power, experience your, your breakthroughs, experience your peace, experience your prosperity, because they will begin to live out the truth of the gospel that Jesus Christ is enough. Holy Spirit, continue to work in our hearts. Oh, and continue to make that revelation sure and make that revelation clear. Oh, that Jesus truly uh, is enough for us. Thank you, God. We bless you. We praise you. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord. Lord, for those people who are listening now, either in their homes or sitting somewhere or standing somewhere or wherever they may be, even as they hear that Jesus Christ, the truth of the gospel, that He is enough, I pray that God, if they are in a place where they do not know the gospel, they do not know the truth of the gospel, but now they have heard it. And they who know the truth, the Bible says, the truth will set them free. I pray that this truth, O oh God, will become personal knowledge in their hearts and minds. And they will receive and they will believe that Jesus Christ truly is the Son of the living God. He is the Saviour of the world. He is the way, the truth and the life. And I pray, O oh God, that as, as we are listening with our hearts and ears of faith, that our eyes will be open, our hearts will be open to receive the love of God, to receive Jesus Christ, to become our Lord and Saviour. And so, Lord, I want to lead them all, everyone in their homes, wherever they are, wherever they are, Lord, that even as faith is coming to their hearts and they are wanting to believe, they are wanting to open their hearts to receive, even as they have perceived that Jesus truly is Lord and Saviour, the Son of the living God, that He died so that we might live and He lives so that death may die. Lord, I pray that as eyes are closed and heads are bowed, and Lord, I pray that those who do not know you will want to know you today. They will want to put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Lord, they will they say in their hearts, oh, I want to give Jesus a try. I want to give Jesus uh, you know, a, a, a space. I want to give Jesus room to move in my life. I want to put my faith in Jesus. Let's pray this prayer if that's what you are saying, if that's what you want, if, that, if that's what you are saying. Pastor Kenneth, please pray for me. I want to open my heart to receive the love of Jesus, to receive His truth into my life. I want to be liberated. I want to be free as He has promised to set me free. Oh, I believe that I will be saved uh, because of Jesus. I want to receive this right now. Even as you are lifting up your hands, your right hand, wherever you are, you're saying, Lord, come into my life. I let me lead you in this prayer. Let's all pray. Repeat after me if you can. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me so much. You died on the cross for my sins. Today, because of what you have done for me, I have forgiveness. God the Father has forgiven me through Jesus because I come believing that He is Lord. He is my Lord, my Savior. Today, Lord, I open my heart to You. I receive the truth of the Gospel. I receive Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart, Lord. Come into my life. Fill me with Your Holy Spirit even right now. Let your joy, the joy of your salvation come upon me. I receive all this by faith. I believe that I have become a child of God because the Bible says, whoever who believes, God has given us the right to become children of God. 
So we believe and we receive. And today, I am saved. I am saved in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you have said that prayer, please find a way to email us, uh, to uh, you know, tell us that you have said this prayer. Even while you're watching this, you know, right there at the bottom, you can give your comments. You can say, you know, I said that prayer. I meant it with my heart. I believe in Jesus. Uh, you know, and we will send you a material. We'll send you either a physical material or a digital material. Someone will be in touch with you. Please leave a contact uh, number or email so that we can be in touch with you. You are precious. Every soul watching this is precious. Maybe today you're not ready to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But I tell you what, Jesus loves you. Don't take too long. I pray you'll be the next time, if not the next time, after the next time. But, you know, I pray that you open your heart and that you believe. And so the next time you have an opportunity, give your life to Jesus. You will never regret it. God bless you until we meet again. That was an amazing word and an amazing time together, church. Let's worship God one more time and let's declare this truth into our lives and into our nation. Amen. Here we go. He may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. He may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Sing it. He may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, he may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I find my metal. In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises flow Up from the edges Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm We want to close in prayer. Let's pray. Father Lord, we pray for your covering and your care to come upon Pastor Kenneth and Sandra. All our elders, pastors, our church plant coordinators. Both here and abroad, as, as well as all our leaders who serve your house so faithfully week after week. Give them your daily peace and protection and provide them with all your needs according to your riches in glory. We pray for the wisdom to continue to lead your church in line with your perfect will. Let your joy always be their strength and let their lives bring you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Church, can I invite you to lift up our hands as I declare the benediction? Taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ 
and the love of God, 神的慈爱 and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 圣灵的感动常与你们众人同在 Amen. Amen. 神祝福你们 Amen. Thank you, church. Thank you for tuning in with us. 谢谢你今天早上参与我们的在线敬拜赞美聚会 Stay safe and take care of yourselves. 大家记得好好保护自己，保护身边的人 We'll see you again next week. 我们下个星期再见喽 God bless you. 神祝福你们 Before we say、uh, goodbye to uh, Saragena, ah yo, you guys can go to bloopers. We also want to celebrate some wedding anniversaries. Oh, we're not gonna sing birthday song. Oh, let's sing the birthday <laughs> line. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Where should we start? All right, church. Let's come together and worship God. Ah,、uh, before we say goodbye to, ah,、uh, why do I keep saying goodbye? Wow, loud. Our pastor told us today's news. Oh yes. Here we go. How many? Ah! Uh, director wanted bloopers, so I did that. Okay, cool.